Hi, everybody. As we continue along in our series talking about the power of promise, today we want to talk about as promises of God relate to spiritual disciplines. Listen, uh, I, like you, I believe in living by the promises of God's Word, that He gives us so many wonderful promises that we can read, we can understand, we can apply, we can trust. It's an important thing for us to do, to live by the power of God's promises. And I would say that it's even more true in times of crisis and turmoil. And I don't know how exactly you would define crisis or turmoil, but I would say that the first six months of the year 2020 have been marked by a lot of crisis and turmoil in the world. And this is something I found out, that in any time that is marked by crisis or turmoil, whether it's in the world as a whole or just our individual lives or in our families, it's always good to get back to basics to think of the very basic building blocks of our life with God and to just put a renewed focus upon those. So with that in mind, here's a promise that I'd like you to consider today. The promise is simply this. It's from James chapter 4, verse 8. All right, here's a promise that God makes to you. You ready for it? James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. (laughs) Let me read that again. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. That's God's promise. God says, if you draw near to me, I will draw near to you. God will never leave you hanging. You know, it happens sometimes you put your hand out to shake somebody's hand. I don't know if we're doing that anymore in this global pandemic season. But in the old days, when we used to shake hands, you'd put your hand out to shake somebody's hand, and they wouldn't put their hand out to you. God will never leave you hanging in that way. When you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. And what I just want you to think about is the different ways that we can draw near to God and claim this promise. For for example, the early church drew near to God as it's described in Acts chapter 2, verse 42. It says this, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, that's the word of God, in fellowship, that's getting together with God's people, in the breaking of bread, that's the Lord's table, and in prayers. These things are very basic things in the Christian life. The Word of God, getting together with other believers, having communion together, and praying together. But in those very basic things, the early church drew near to God, and they were blessed. God drew near to them. If there's anything we believe, we believe that God drew near to the early church, that he was present with them and among them in great power. Well, we know this, do we not? That when we draw near to God, he will draw near to us. And if we draw near to God in the same ways that the early church did, in the word of God, in fellowship with God's people, in receiving communion, in in praying together, uh, we know God will draw near to us. So please understand just these very basic things. I would just simply say, remember that God's word has a promised power. We find that in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. You know this familiar verse. It says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, for it is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So... Knowing the power of God's word, the promised power of God's word, draw near to God through his word to receive this promise. See, what I'm doing is I'm connecting these promises from James chapter 4 and Hebrews chapter 4. Draw near to God and he'll draw near to you. You draw near to him through his word and you'll receive some of the power that is inherent in the word of God. So God's word has a promised power. Draw near to him through his word and you'll receive that promise. But coming to God in prayer also has a promised power. Let me read you a few verses from Luke chapter 11 where Jesus described the importance of prayer. These are the words of Jesus. He said this, again, Luke chapter 11, starting at verse 9. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For 
everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Listen, if Jesus has promised us that prayer has real power, It's not just a self-improvement exercise. No, I believe that prayer is a self-improvement exercise, but it's not just that. It has real power before God. Then we can draw near to God through prayer. One of those very basic spiritual disciplines to receive this promise. So the basic spiritual discipline of being in God's word, it has a promise of power. The very basic spiritual discipline of prayer has a promised power that we can receive. But then also coming to God in the company of God's people has a promised power. Look, I I know, I understand. It's a little bit different right now in the days of a global pandemic when we've had our fellowship patterns interrupted and modified in the past several months. But this is what I want you to remind you, that those fellowship patterns have been interrupted and modified. They haven't been erased. We're getting together right now, in some sense, in and through God's Word. And it's not as good as us getting together in that wonderful, great room there out at Calle Cesar Chavez and just meeting together as a congregation. It's not as good as that, but it's something. It's doing what we can and seeing God's blessing upon it. But coming to God in the company of God's people has a promised power. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another and so much so as you see the day approaching. The simple spiritual discipline of meeting together with God's people in whatever way we can, that's a way that we draw near to him. And what's God's promise? You draw near to him, he will draw near to you. So draw near to him together with his people to receive this promise. You're doing that right now as we join together as this family over video and over the connection that God gives us. And we're going to be able to do it better and better as the days go on. Let me give you one other way that we can draw near to God. It's coming to God in humble repentance. James chapter 5 verse 16 says this, confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Again, that's James chapter 5, verse 16. And that's speaking to us, uh, among other things, about the power of coming to God in humble repentance and confession of sin. You know, that's a spiritual discipline in itself, isn't it? Keeping that humble heart before the Lord, keeping a low account before God. Short accounts is a better way of describing it. We we don't let the the, uh, uh, bills expire, but when we sin before God, we confess it and repent of it, and we do it soon. That has a wonderful, powerful promise in us. Draw near to him in humility to receive the promise of God's power and presence in your life. Look, believers, let's come back to this wonderful principle of We have basic spiritual disciplines through which we can draw near to God. The discipline of being in his word, the discipline of prayer, the discipline of worship and assembling together with God's people. And over all of that, a general humble attitude before God. Those things, those things are ways that we draw near to God. And here's his promise. You draw near to God in those basic spiritual disciplines. He will draw near to you. And that's where we want to be. We want to be close to God. And even more importantly, we want him to be close to us. These beautiful spiritual disciplines are a very basic way that he's given us. Don't despise them because they're basic. No, instead, come back to them again and again and again. This is the gift that God gives us to do. And I pray that the Lord would bless you in the pursuit of these basic spiritual disciplines.